2010 15-inch MacBook Pro keyboard replacement. Please notice the difficulty of this replacement as the DVD drive and the logic board will have to be removed. Begin by shutting down and flipping over the MacBook. We'll need to remove the three long Phillips head screws first. Now remove the seven short Phillips head screws. After removing these ten screws, the rear panel cover should be free. Go ahead and remove the rear panel cover. Battery removal. Begin by removing the three tri-wing screws securing the battery. The screw all the way on the left is hidden behind the tape. Pull up and remove the battery out of its socket. It's still connected to the logic board. Disconnect it by prying it left to right with your fingernail. Logic board removal. Begin by removing the three T6 screws securing the right fan. You can leave them in place, but unscrew them about four turns each. Lift up and disconnect the fan from the logic board. Be careful when disconnecting, you can damage this connection. Repeat the same procedure on the left fan as well. Remove the three T6 screws. Leave them in place. Lift up the fan and disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the trackpad and keyboard cover that's secured with two Phillips head screws. Disconnect the LVDS cable by first moving up its locking mechanism and pushing it back out of the socket. Be very careful when making this disconnection. This socket could be damaged easily. Disconnect the battery life indicator simply by pulling it up. Disconnect the keyboard. There is a little lever that you have to push up to unlock the keyboard connection. Then you can just pull it out by the tab. Disconnect the trackpad. Disconnect the SATA hard drive cable. Disconnect the speaker. Disconnect the DVD drive. Disconnect the Wi-Fi cable. Disconnect the EyeSight camera cable. Remove the seven T6 screws securing the logic board in place. They're all identical size. Pull up the board gently, but be careful, there are two more connections. You might feel some resistance, that's because the microphone is glued to the case. You can just pry it away from the case. You can now disconnect the DC end board. The logic board is now free. Keyboard removal. Begin by removing the two Wi-Fi bracket Phillips head screws. The one on the right is the short one, the one on the left is the long one. Push the bracket out of the way. Remove three Phillips head DVD drive screws. Gently lift up the drive at the bottom right corner and pull it out. Remove the two Phillips head screws securing the mid wall. There's one on top and one on the bottom. You can 
now remove the mid wall. Remove the Wi Fi antenna Phillips head screw. This will allow enough space to pry out the power button. Remove the two short Phillips head screws that are securing the power button in place. Pry out the power button. It should be able to come out from in between the Wi Fi cables and the speaker cable. This will take some time. Be careful not to damage this connection. Tweezers <clears throat> you can go ahead and lift up the backlight layers. There are three layers. The most bottom layer is the shadow layer. The next layer is the light distribution layer and then the final top layer is the actual backlight. Make sure to gently remove these backlight layers as they can rip. Remove 51 Phillips head screws securing the keyboard in place. Once the screws have been removed the keyboard will look like this when it's out. Keyboard installation. Install the 51 Phillips head screws to secure the keyboard in place. Once the keyboard is secure, go ahead and peel away the guide hole from the backlight. There are two guide holes in the backlight. They line up with the studs on the keyboard. Place the keyboard backlight in using the studs that go into the guide holes to align it properly. This is a very important step. If you do not do this correctly, the backlight will not function. Go ahead and tuck in the power button in between the speaker and the Wi-Fi cables. Drop it into place. You can go ahead and secure the power button with the two Phillips head short screws. Install the Wi-Fi antenna cable screw. Secure the mid wall with two Phillips head screws, one in the top and one in the bottom. can now insert the DVD drive into its socket. Let's secure it with the three Phillips head screws. Now place the Wi-Fi bracket over the drive and install the two Phillips head screws, the long one on the left
and the short one on the right. We'll now need to reinstall the logic board. Logic board installation. Rotate the board into the correct position and connect the DCN board to the logic board. You can now flip it over and insert the board in at an angle. Try to push connections out of the way as you do this. It's okay because we'll be going over all the connections. Pull out any trapped connections, either with your fingers or a set of tweezers. Make sure not to forget the backlight connection. Just go around the contour of the logic board and make sure that nothing is trapped. Once nothing's trapped, go ahead and reinstall the seven T6 screws securing the board in place. We can now begin connecting everything back. Go ahead and start off with the keyboard backlight connector near the right fan. Make sure to lift up on the lever. Insert the connector in and press down on the lever. Connect the iSight cable next. This cable goes underneath the Wi Fi cable, so plug it in first. Connect the Wi Fi cable over the iSight cable. Connect the DVD drive next. Connect the speaker. Next, connect the hard drive. We can now connect the trackpad. And the keyboard. Make sure that the keyboard lever is up. Gently pry in the connection. You can wiggle it left to right to make it easier to fit into the socket. Once it's all the way in, go ahead and lay down the keyboard lever. Connect the battery life indicator. Connect the LBDS cable connection. Make sure that you are gentle when making this connection as you can damage the socket. Lock in the lock lever. Install the right fan. Place it into the socket and secure the three T6 screws. Connect the fan to the logic board. Install the left fan. Secure the three T6 screws. Connect it to the logic board. Install the trackpad and keyboard shield. Secure it with two Phillips head screws. battery installation. Peel back the battery cable to give you some slack, about two inches. Connect the battery to the logic board.
Insert the battery into the socket now. Install the three tri-wing screws. Install the rear cover panel. Install the three long Phillips head screws first as shown. Now install the seven short Phillips head screws. Thank you.